All right, so this next lesson is all about independent and dependent events. We did this activity in class trying to get an idea of what that means. Independent be meaning that it has the event that happens first has no real uh, effect on the second event. Um, that's what we kind of practice within class with our coins instead of marbles. So the first thing I want to make sure we have is get an idea of some of the formulas that we're going to be using. Just get an idea. So the first one is an independent event. Okay, the independent events are the ones that does not affect event, uh, does not affect the likelihood of other events happening. Um, this is our this is our like our example in class when we pulled one coin and then put it back into the cup in order to pull again. So every single time we go to pull, it's the exact same probability of getting each color. So the formula you see here is to figure out the total probability of an event that has multiple events happening is the probability of event A multiplied by probability of event B. And if you have more events, then you keep going on and so on and so on. Okay, so the first example we're going to look at involves this one right here. You spin the spinner and flip the coin. What is the probability of spinning a prime number and flipping tails? Okay. So in this example here, the outcome of the spinner does not affect the outcome of flipping the coin. So this one plays no role in this. This is completely independent of whatever the spinner does. Okay. So the uh, probability of doing a prime number, okay, uh, we have a total of three of them, two, three, and five, things that cannot be divided or simplified more. That's why two, three, and five are. So three out of five of those are going to be uh, prime numbers. The probability of flipping a tails is one out of two. Okay, because these are both independent events, we can just multiply these together. Three fifths times one half. Okay, three fifths times one half, which would give us three tenths. So the probability of getting a prime number and flipping tails would be three tenths. The next one, example number two. People are randomly chosen to the be uh, game show contestants from an audience of 1,000 people, or sorry, 100 people. You are with five of your relatives and six other friends. What is the probability that one of your relatives is chosen first, and then one of your friends is chosen second? So the first thing I hope you notice is 100 people total, and within that 100 people, you get five relatives and six other friends, 11 people that your either relatives are or you know of. Okay. Well, the first thing you hopefully notice is that one of your relatives, uh, was probably, what is the probability that one of your relatives is chosen? And that's only five of them. So that's five out of 100 for your first one. Okay, five out of 100, which is 1 20th. Okay, and then one of your friends. Well, initially you're going to say six friends out of 100, but realize that you just picked one of your relatives for the first event. So this is an example of a dependent event because you're not going to have 100 people to choose from anymore. You're going to have only 99. Okay, So you're going to do the uh, number of friends, 6, out of 99, which simplifies 2 33rds, and you're going to end up multiplying those together. So 1 20th times 2 33rds, okay? and you end up getting an answer of 2, and, or 2 over 660, which simplifies to 1 over 330. All right? So that's the probability of getting a relative first and then your friend right after that. Okay, so that's an example of dependent event. Um, the formula, I didn't show it yet because I wanted to see that part. Dependent formula is the probability of event A happening and then the probability of B after A happens. So you saw me adjust the uh, denominator of that pr probability of A because, um, because we lost one person in the previous event. Okay. The last one, example number three. This one y'all might find mildly entertaining here. A student randomly guesses the answer for each of the following multiple choice questions. What is the probability of answering all three questions correctly? So you get all three. So you'll notice you have five choices for each one of these questions. Okay. So choosing the answer for one question does not affect the choice for the other. Yeah. So this is an example of independent events because just because you pick D doesn't mean you can't get two right or three right or vice versa. Okay. So because of that, we know that each chance is a one in five chance. So one fifth, one fifth, one fifth, which means the likelihood of likelihood of us getting all correct 
ends up being one fifth times one fifth times one fifth, which is one over one hundred twenty-five. Okay. You also could could have used the uh, fundamental counting principle, knowing that we have five options for each one. So you could have done five times five times five. Okay. That would have been 125 possible outcomes, and we only want one possible way. We want them all right. So that's one out of 125. Okay. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully that makes sense, and I'll see you all tomorrow.